Obviously, I get a lot of people asking about my 18 key layout and they want to see more of a tour. Now, I actually did a tour when I was looking at my 16 key layout, which essentially the 18 key layout is almost exactly the same. In that 16 key video, I did suggest what I would do if I went back up to 18 keys because I was sort of feeling the need to do that. And that's exactly what my 18 key layout is. I did add those two keys and those are the repeat key and the key that takes me direct to a caps version of my second alpha layer. So rather than do a full layout tour like I did with the 16, what I'm going to do is just focus on the features that make the layout possible and I think that's what's quite interesting and that I think is going to be more useful to you because you can then kind of pick and mix those features and use them in your own layouts and you can see how it would fit in. So do check out the 16 key layout tour on my main channel. If you're interested in designing and building your own custom keyboard like I've done here you'll need a PCB manufacturer and PCB Way are kindly sponsoring this video and they offer all kinds of services right through from super affordable prototype fabrication right through to their advanced PCB service which has all kinds of amazing color schemes including the transparent solder mask with the black core which lets your copper layer shine through the whole board through this transparent solder mask on the dark core board which is an amazing way to get a really premium looking custom keyboard here. I'm very happy to recommend the services they provide. I was using them long before they started sponsoring my videos as well. So let's jump in with the first feature and that is having the forward delete key on my left hand. So the idea here is that I still have the ability to delete something when I'm using the mouse with my right hand. So obviously your backspace key is normally on your right hand and when you're mousing you lose that ability to backspace and that's kind of a really frustrating little workflow. So by putting the forward delete key on the left hand, by doing that it means when you're mousing with the right hand you can make a selection and you can just use the forward delete key to delete your selection and that's a really nice little handy trick. So my forward delete key is on my system layer and I get into that with the home row mod style switch here which I use for the layer switch instead of as a modifier. Now as a Mac user, the application switcher is one of those things that you, you're so familiar with on a Mac, you just command tab, you know, having a separate tab key and the, and the dedicated command key on the normal Mac keyboards makes that very easy, but it is obviously a long way from your home row. And obviously the application switcher has some interesting shortcuts, like you can use the Q key to quit an application as you highlight it in the application switcher. So I wanted to maintain that ability, but on this tiny layout, my tab key is on my system layer. So I have to go into the system layer, which of course means I can't then use the Q key without letting go of the keyboard, which would dismiss miss the application switcher. So putting a dedicated Q key as a tap hold event on one of the keys in the system layer means I can still quit selected applications while I'm using the command tab application switcher in my system layer. So I hold down that tap hold layer switch to go into my system layer and then I use my home row mod style command key and then I can use tab so I can use the application switcher like that and I also have a shift key on my system layer as well so I can use that to go backwards through the application switcher. So I can use that Mac application switcher fully by going forwards or backwards using tab or shift tab and I can still trigger that Q key as needed just by using that tap hold key there as well. Next up, we've got the repeat key, which is one of the keys I added when I went from the 16 key layout to the 18 key layout. Um, just a fantastic key to have, especially if you use things like Vim, where you're firing commands and wanting to repeat them, like going up a line or going down a half page or a page. Uh, super useful to have that repeat key. It repeats the last key, even if it was a complex modded combo. So just generally a very handy key to have while you're programming, but also for typing. And I'm slowly trying to incorporate that. So if you're typing word like hello, that's got two L's. So you hit the L key once and then you can just roll onto that repeat key and then back onto O and you've written the word and that is much faster but you obviously have to learn that pattern and that seems to occupy surprisingly more muscle memory than you think it should. You realize that you know you get into the habit of a double tap on a letter to switch that then to using the repeat key uh, it, it is more taxing than I thought it was going to be but you can definitely see the advantage in terms of sort of speed and effort. I think tapping the same key twice with with one finger is a pretty awkward thing to do. It's much nicer to do a single hit and then onto another key especially being the thumb key. So the next feature I use on this 18 key keyboard is, is splitting it obviously into two alpha layers. So there's not enough keys for the whole alphabet on my tiny keyboard here. So what I do is split the alpha letters into two layers and I've basically moved the sort of less frequently used keys onto this second layer. Now what that meant on my 16 key version that didn't have this key that sent me straight into the caps version of the second layer, it meant to get a capital letter on my second layer, I'd have to use my one shot shift key as well as the layer switch. So it would be three keys for a capital second layer key so I wanted to simplify that so in addition to my normal layer switch to go into the second alpha layer I can now go directly into the caps version of that layer instead so if I want the capital version I just 
just use that switch instead of the normal layer switch for the second alpha layer. That's obviously only relevant if you're splitting your alpha keys across two layers. But if you want to experiment with that smaller board and doing that, I think it's a very interesting approach. And I still really enjoy the lack of finger movement with this layout. The flip side to that is I am still struggling with accuracy. I do still make quite a lot of mistakes as I'm trying to push my speed. I sort of feel like the speed this board is capable of is quite high. But as a result of that, it's also very easy to make mistakes. It's possible I do just need to do a bit more practice and get more word patterns into my memory rather than just letters. I think that's very important with this. It's much more about word patterns than individual letters in your head when you're typing on a layout across two layers like this. You really need to get a handle of how that layer switching fits into the pattern of the word. So your muscle memory is learning the word, including the layer switch that's necessary to get to those keys. And that's the bit I think that's slowing me down on getting up to the kind of accuracy that I would really like to see with this layout. I think if it carries on for too long, I'm definitely going to consider adding more keys back just to avoid that problem. But I do really encourage anyone who's interested in custom layouts to experiment with this kind of tiny board with your alpha key split over two layers because the impact on finger movement is absolutely fascinating and definitely hugely beneficial. So the next thing that makes this tiny layout work is my home row mod switches. So I use those for layers and mods, but crucially not the shift key. I don't think it's possible to use a shift key as a home row mod style key. It just doesn't work. You need the shift key to work in a roll situation. So what happens with the shift key normally in fast typing, if you want to quickly capitalize a letter, you'll find you roll through the shift key. So if that functionality was on a key that behaved as another letter, there's no way the board would be able to discern the difference between you doing a shifted key like that with that roll or just a roll as a result of normal Normal typing, which happens all the time, obviously you overlap your keystrokes, which means I don't think there's any way you can reliably use a shift key on a home row mod. If you've done that, great, you've got your head around the timing, but that means you're adding the pause every time you want to use the shift key, and I just can't get my head around that. If I'm capitalizing a letter, I don't want to be adding that pause to my flow there while I'm typing. So I use my top row. By top row, I mean one key above my home row, and there's no more keys. So that's what I use for the mods on the tap holds. So I've got Command, Alt, and Control on that on both halves. Now on the ZMK config, you have got the ability to isolate isolate those to only work with your other side. So I tried this and actually found out quite quickly I was actually using lots of same hand combos with those mods. So I put it back. So either side will work across the whole board for those mods. So my home row keys are actually used for my layer switches using the tap hold as well. So both for my mods and my layer switching, there is that slight pause. I have to keep it held down for long enough to reach the timeout value for it to work as the mod or the layer switch. But the really interesting thing and what makes this all work is the timeout only applies to the release of the held down key. You haven't got to wait before you hit the key that you want modded or from the other layer. So you can actually roll from a mod, say, to a letter. As long as you hold down the mod for the timeout, it will then fire the modded version of that key. As long as you do continue to hold down the mod key for the timeout, you'll still get the modded version of that, even if you hit your letter key immediately after your mod key. And the same with the layer switches. So that way of working makes this keyboard really feel fast. You know, you can go into a layer and you get it as soon as the timeout is reached. You're not guessing that timeout. It just, it feels so much better than you think it's going to. And I think that's a really important way of understanding how the tap holds can work like this. So there's one thing that kind of is a bit of a problem with a layout like this. My arrow keys on what I call the system layer. So I'm holding down the index finger on my left hand to put my board into the system layer so that I can get the arrow keys and under this sort of inverted T shape with my right hand. But of course, if I wanted to do something like command left or command right, the left index finger is normally what I would use for the command tap hold on the left hand, so I can't do that. So on my system layer, I have the shift and command keys available as thumb keys on that layer, which lets me do all kinds of interesting things. And of course, I can still use the alt tap hold with my middle finger, so I can do the full array of modded arrow keys quite easily with this setup as well. So window and tab management is something I really value being able to do quickly with this keyboard. And that required a little bit of thought. And what this means is I go into my system layer with the right hand and then use a single tap on my left hand to fire the full shortcuts for things like cycling between windows or cycling between tabs, as well as things like navigation history forwards and backwards as well. So having all of that stuff very easy to access and it works really well. Next up, we're going to look at switching the space key to a mech key when you hold it down. And I did a whole video on this on my main channel because it is just such a brilliantly useful thing. Obviously, coming from Vim, I use my space key as a leader key. So I'm already thinking of that left thumb as a kind of shortcut trigger. So what I've got set up here is a tap hold on my space key that when it's held down will give me the mech key, which is shift, alt and control. And what that means is you get a sort of a scope of shortcuts inside the Mac operating system that are very easy to avoid conflicting with other shortcuts. And you can set those up. You 
using something like Keyboard Maestro. So I've set up all kinds of different shortcuts, primarily application switches, so I can hold down that MEC key, hit a single letter key, and jump straight to the application. And that's just a, a fantastically brilliant shortcut mechanism when I'm using this keyboard on a Mac. The next little trick I use on this board is setting up the, the repeat firing of a key when you hold it down. So obviously the bulk of my letter keys use a tap hold event, either for the layer switching or the mods. So of course by default that prevents these keys from repeating themselves as you hold them down. So with a normal keyboard when you hold the letter down it repeats itself. And that is quite useful in various situations, so I didn't want to lose that ability completely. But luckily there is an option in ZMK that lets you use a double tap hold to then trigger the repeat key. So if you do a tap and then immediately another tap and then hold it, it will then start repeating itself and behave like a normal repeat key, which is super handy. If you found this video interesting, you'll love this one where I look at how I actually tent my keyboard using this mechanism that allows for sort of almost infinite adjustability, but super solid when it's locked off. Now here are some comments to let you know. It'll be worth your while and I'll see you there.